Why are you ignoring me? I've decided not to talk to people I don't know. I get it. I'll move out of my in-law's place. They're totally ignoring me. I expected it from my mother-in-law, but I never thought my father-in-law would treat me this way. There's a reason why my in-laws, who used to be nice, changed. It's because of my sister-in-law, who doesn't like me. Ever since she came back home, our peaceful life together has been completely messed up. Don't expect me to regret it, okay? You think I'm going to feel sorry about this? Think again, jerk. I packed my stuff and left my in-law's house. And guess what? Just three days after I left, their house turned into chaos. I met my husband at work. He worked in sales and came to my office often, and I was the main person he dealt with. As we spent more time together in meetings and chats, I started to like him. He was caring and kind, tall and not necessarily conventionally handsome, but he had this charm about him. He was popular, but for some reason, he said he liked me, and we started going out. We talked about our families, and he told me about his parents and sister. I lost my parents in an accident when I was young and grew up in an orphanage. It was a big deal for me, but when we started dating, I told him about my past. He said, that sounds tough, but I'll always be there for you, and then he asked me to marry him. Right from the start, my husband wanted us to get married, so he quickly introduced me to his parents. During the meeting, I shared about my time growing up in an orphanage. They listened carefully and assured me that it wouldn't affect our marriage. It made me really happy. They even said that my background had no bearing on being part of their family, which warmed my heart. Only my sister-in-law, who was very close to her brother, seemed surprised at asking, you grew up in an orphanage. My husband had to talk to her about it. Looking back, she probably didn't like me from the start, but I didn't dwell on it then. I just thought we were getting to know each other before we got married. My husband and I talked about moving in with his parents. We thought about it seriously, but in the end, I decided not to leave my job. It turned out my husband was going to be transferred soon anyway. I thought about quitting to go with him, but my career was going strong and I had just been given more responsibilities. After discussing it, we decided he would move alone. After tying the knot, I wanted to enjoy that newly wedded bliss for a while. I even casually thought about visiting my husband during long weekends for a little getaway. The idea of moving in with my in-laws right after marriage seemed a bit daunting, but my husband probably felt more comfortable living with them, plus he likely wanted to reassure his always worried mother by having us all under one roof. Since I lost my parents early on, I'd always longed for a family, so living with them didn't sound too bad. Besides, my in-laws had always treated me kindly, and I had grown fond of them. Juggling work and my responsibilities as a daughter-in-law was tough, but having a family made me happy and fulfilled. Then one day, my father-in-law approached me with an unexpected request. This marked the beginning of some tension in our seemingly happy living arrangement. It was a time when my overly anxious mother-in-law, who tended to be a bit controlling, was out shopping. I was about to start cleaning on my day off when my father-in-law asked to talk to me. What's up? I asked. Well, I don't want my wife to find out, but I'm taking a leave from work, he said. Wait, a leave? He explained that he'd been having issues with his boss and colleagues, and his health had gotten so bad that he had no choice but to take time off. My mother-in-law is generally a kind person, but she's always on edge and a bit obsessive. Living with them, I started to notice her anxious habits and how my father-in-law walked on eggshells around her to avoid upsetting her. He had always been slim, but looking back, I realized he had lost even more weight recently. It would have been comforting if my mother-in-law showed genuine concern about his weight loss. Instead, when he took a sick day for a cold, before she commented, a cold. 
Everyone else at your level is already at the top. It's because you're always taking time off for silly reasons like Coles. That's why you're not getting promoted. Rather than being caring, she was the type to be critical. He probably tried to soldier on no matter how bad he felt, but his health kept declining and he started taking more sick days to secretly visit the hospital. He was really struggling both mentally and physically with his frequent early departures, lateness, and days off. There was talk of him possibly needing to take a break from work, but my father-in-law was hesitant to upset my mother-in-law in any way. If he even suggested taking time off, she'd likely explode with anger. Plus, my father-in-law didn't earn much, and he relied on overtime pay, so taking a break would mean a significant drop in income. If he told my husband, he'd probably end up telling my mother-in-law. So he came to me, asking if I could help with the bills. If I mentioned taking a break, she might even leave me, he said. Those words hit me hard. I was grateful to my in-laws for accepting me warmly, regardless of my background. Determined to be there for them, I decided to assist him during this tough period. I understand. I'll send money to your account every month. Use it for expenses. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best to get better soon and go back to work. Thank you for trusting me, I said. After that, my father-in-law continued his routine of pretending to go to work while I sent money to his bank account for living expenses. My mother-in-law, who wasn't very meticulous with her finances, never noticed my transfers because she didn't check her bank statements closely or keep track of household expenses. Meanwhile, my father-in-law would pretend to head to work, but instead visit a mental health clinic or take walks in the peaceful mountains. Over time, his health seemed to improve. I hoped he'd be back to work soon, but then something unexpected happened. After a disagreement with her husband, my sister-in-law decided to go back to her parents' home. There's no place like home. I felt like I was going crazy living with that idiot husband of mine. I'll be staying here for a while. Can you make meals for me too? She asked. I knew right from the start that my sister-in-law wasn't fond of me. At our first family gathering, my husband was visibly upset because of her obvious disapproval. During our wedding, she wore a sour expression the whole time and even told me straight to my face, my brother looks great, but you, he could have done better. She didn't hide her disdain for me, mentioning that it was embarrassing that I grew up without parents to attend the wedding. However, since she got married before us and had already moved out, I figured our interactions would be limited. That's why I thought living with them wouldn't be too bad. If she had still been living at home, I wouldn't have even considered moving in, knowing I'd have to deal with her constant criticism. Despite her stern attitude towards my father-in-law, I assumed her stay was temporary because of her marital issues and expected her to leave within a few days. My mother-in-law had always been kind to me, and even when my sister-in-law made snarky remarks, I trusted that my mother-in-law would stand up for me. But I was mistaken. One evening, when I came home from work, my mother-in-law's demeanor seemed off. Is everything okay? I asked. She seemed distant, not engaging in our usual conversation. When I inquired, she said, Did you know you've been speaking ill of me behind my back? What? I've never said anything negative about you. You've always treated me well, and I'm genuinely grateful. Why would I say anything bad? I responded. You've been acting like the perfect daughter-in-law, but you've been gossiping about me in secret, she accused. Fine, whatever, I replied, and she left the room. As she walked away, my sister-in-law smirked. Looks like you've fallen out of favor. Did your true colors come out? Your upbringing in an institution is really showing, huh? It's better not to gossip about people. I haven't said anything bad about her. I protested. Oh, it seems the neighbors heard you when I returned after so long. They mentioned that you've been constantly criticizing her, 
My sister-in-law said, What? Who are these neighbors? I asked. Well, it's been a while since I got married and moved out, so I've kind of forgotten their names, she replied. I never said any of those things. Stop making things up, I insisted. Oh my, how rude of you, Mom. You're accusing me of lying and bullying, my sister-in-law said, storming into my mother-in-law's room. From that moment on, my sister-in-law's nasty behavior only got worse. She accused me of telling her to sleep in the hallway and take the last bath because she's just a guest. She nitpicked about every little thing and complained to my mother-in-law each time. I had to defend myself, explaining that I hadn't said or done any of those things. But my mother-in-law seemed completely swayed by my sister-in-law's words falling under her influence. My sister-in-law carried on as if she had no intention of leaving any time soon, leaving me worried sick as I headed home with a heavy heart. I'm back, I announced, hoping for the usual warm greeting from my mother-in-law. Instead, there was silence. I'll start dinner, I said, stepping into the living room, only to be greeted by a shocking sight. Normally, my sister-in-law would rush me to prepare dinner, but now my mother-in-law, father-in-law, and sister-in-law were all enjoying sushi together. Surprised? My sister-in-law remarked, Looks like someone who's not part of the family is home. You're not planning on having sushi, are you? Without a glance in my direction, my mother-in-law continued eating while watching TV. If you wanted sushi, you should have said so. I hurried back after shopping. No one mentioned that. I sighed. Hey, Mom, Dad, I hung out with my friends today and brought back some delicious pudding. Let's enjoy it together, I said, trying to lighten the atmosphere. My sister-in-law chimed in, ignoring me completely as they all began eating the pudding. Exhausted from work and lacking the energy to confront them, I retreated to my room without eating. The next day, my sister-in-law mentioned she was meeting friends and asked if I could drop her off at the station. I declined as it was a work day and we weren't heading the same way. Come on, it's a day off. It's not a big deal. Your dear sis-in-law just wants a lift. She hasn't had much fun since getting married, right? Can't you be a bit nicer? She insisted. Respectfully, didn't you go out with friends last night after a late call? It seems like you've been going out almost every day since you got back. I have work. Please take the bus or train, I replied. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law were whispering in the background, but I had enough. I headed to work that night. However, the moment that convinced me to leave happened when I returned home after picking up groceries. Expecting some sort of scolding, I was surprised to find them all eating takeout just like the day before. But then I noticed something placed in the center of the garden. Upon closer inspection, it was my belongings, my designer bag, shoes, even my work computer, now soaked. Shocked, I stood frozen as my sister-in-law smirked and remarked, having a stranger's things in the house was gross, so I got rid of them. Flaunting a designer bag like that, how arrogant. Neither of my in-laws said a word about her appalling behavior. Why didn't you intervene? What have I done to deserve this treatment? Do you truly believe her lies about me badmouthing and bullying her? Aren't you angry with her for what she did? I pleaded. My mother-in-law avoided eye contact, remaining silent. Why won't you speak up? I asked. But she replied, I can't talk to strangers. I can't be friendly with someone who isn't family. My sister-in-law grinned, waiting for my response. And where's my father-in-law? I'm the one supporting him during his time off. I'm the one contributing to the household finances. Yes, I did it out of gratitude, but shouldn't he stand up for me now? I questioned. That was the final straw for me. I've had enough. Are you upset? I'm sorry, but let's be honest. I never liked you from the start, 
What with your background growing up in an institution? Just don't regret this like I would, loser. My sister-in-law taunted. Gathering my belongings, I prepared to leave immediately. Only my father-in-law seemed flustered, realizing he depended on me financially, yet he made no attempt to stop me or defend me. Utterly disillusioned by his indifference, I drove to my husband's distant work assignment, eager to leave the turmoil of my in-law's house behind as soon as possible. Throughout the journey, I never once opened up to my husband about what had been happening. I doubted my mother-in-law had informed him about my sister-in-law's return. If he had known, he would have surely reached out to me, aware of the strained relationship between us. Yet my husband never mentioned anything about my sister-in-law in his calls or messages, and I didn't sense anything unusual in his behavior. I couldn't shake the feeling that he might be influenced by her, fed lies about various matters. Even now, as I made my way to him, I couldn't shake the fear that he would treat me with the same indifference as the others. My heart ached with exhaustion, torn by suspicion even toward my husband, the person I trusted most. If he shared their mindset and attitude, perhaps divorce was the only solution. That's how deeply distressed I felt when I arrived at his out-of-state apartment. He hadn't returned yet, likely caught up with end-of-month work obligations. As I waited, my husband energetically walked in, perhaps noticing the lights on. What if I knew you were coming? I would have rushed home, he explained. What a pleasant surprise, just seeing your face. His radiant smile immediately lifted my spirits. The relief of seeing him genuinely happy to see me, combined with the lingering humiliation from my in-law's home overwhelmed me, and I couldn't hold back the flood of emotions any longer. Tears streamed down my face as I broke down in his arms. What's wrong? Did something happen? Please tell me, my husband implored, clearly unaware of the treatment I endured at his parents' home. Gathering myself, I knew I needed to explain everything to him. Clearly, I recounted the whole ordeal, how I'd been supporting his father financially, who had taken medical leave without informing his wife, how the sister had returned and poisoned his mother against me with lies, how they treated me as an outsider, ignored me, and left my belongings out in the rain, ruining them. Through tears and pauses, I laid it all out for him. Finally, I made it clear that I had no intention of ever going back to that house, and if he couldn't support me on this, I'd seek a divorce. My husband apologized for being too preoccupied with work and not checking in on me more often, expressing regret over his family's behavior toward me. You don't have to go back there or even speak to them, he assured me. Even if I were to forgive them, I'm cutting ties with my parents and sister. He also vowed to stop providing financial aid to his father. That night, I felt the weight lift off my shoulders. The tension dissolved, and I slept peacefully by his side. After leaving my in-law's house, I never returned. While commuting from my husband's out-of-state location wasn't feasible, I had already discussed with my company the possibility of working remotely. Since my sister-in-law and mother-in-law had begun treating me harshly, my job didn't necessarily require me to be in the office all the time. Many of my colleagues and supervisors also worked remotely. Although I still needed to visit the office a few times a month, several colleagues lived even farther away, so transitioning to remote work wasn't an issue. I hadn't truly experienced married life since moving in with his family and dealing with my sister-in-law's bullying. But now we could finally live like newlyweds. As I was setting up my remote workstation, as expected, my sister-in-law contacted me. It turned out that the day after I left their house was the day my father-in-law was supposed to get paid. Usually, my mother-in-law withdrew a certain amount and transferred it to their household account on payday, but this time she couldn't. Of course not, until now, I have been supplementing my father-in-law's reduced salary due to his time off. Upon checking their balance, my mother-in-law confronted him, and he confessed that I had been helping them financially. 
Hey, why didn't you tell me you were covering the living expenses? She asked. He told me not to, saying he didn't want you to know, so I kept it a secret. Anyway, we're running out of money for living expenses, and there's no one to cook or do laundry. The room is a mess. As his wife, you need to come back and take care of these things and transfer money quickly, she demanded. How heartless. I told you, didn't I? I don't regret this. I have no intention of going back to that house or continuing as your maid. Why should I help people who hate me, destroy my belongings, and treat me like this? Aren't you his wife? Without your help, we can't pay the electricity or gas bills. We can't even go shopping. That's why I said it. I'm an outsider, so it's none of my business. Right. I hung up, ignoring my sister-in-law's ranting. Despite their relentless calls and messages, I continued to ignore my sister-in-law and mother-in-law. Even after my husband returned from work, they persisted in their attempts to contact us. When my husband finally answered, he firmly declared, I'll never forgive you for how you treated her, and I'm never sending her back to you. I'm not coming back either. I don't consider you my family anymore. Stay away from my wife, or you'll regret it. Given my sister-in-law's affection for her brother and my mother-in-law's dependence on him, they were likely shocked by his words. A few days later, my father-in-law reached out, pleading for continued financial assistance. Despite their acceptance of me, a girl from an orphanage, into their family, I couldn't overlook their lack of support during my time of need, despite all the help I had provided. I don't owe them anything. Why should I help those who ignored me? I'll never assist you again, I firmly stated before ending the call. Subsequently, my persistent mother-in-law and sister-in-law audaciously appeared at my workplace, anticipating trouble. I had informed my company beforehand, and security was immediately alerted. They caused a scene, demanding that I send money back home. Upon hearing this, my husband insisted we report them to the police. My colleagues at work were supportive, expressing disbelief at my past living situation. Focus on your remote work, they encouraged. Meanwhile, the pressure from my mother-in-law and sister-in-law took a toll on my father-in-law's health, leading to his resignation. My sister-in-law attempted to return to her husband's family, only to be rejected due to her affair, which had been the original cause of their conflict. This incident exacerbated their problems, resulting in an immediate divorce. Left without a home, my in-laws and sister-in-law relocated to a modest apartment, finding employment and part-time positions to make ends meet. Meanwhile, my husband and I finally found peace and fulfillment in our lives. Recently, we received the joyful news of our impending parenthood and eagerly await the arrival of our child, cherishing each moment together.